Hey, 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 welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast. And today we are talking about how to influence and convert customers. How do you get people from not knowing who you are, uh, not knowing anything about you and getting them to a place where they are ready to pull out their credit card and buy? Today, of like every podcast, guys, we have our co-host who is very, very good at converting customers, getting p- random people who have no clue who he is and getting them to buy something that they actually need in their business. Of course, we have Brandon. Brandon, how are you, Paul? I am doing amazing. How are you? Well, good, mate. Good, good, good. Uh, we've obviously been recording a few, so been on my feet for a while. But no, mate, I am good. I'm excited for this one because it's what everyone wants, isn't it? Everyone just wants to convert customers. They want to get in front of people that they don't know because family and friends don't really buy from you. So they want to get in front of people that they don't know and convert them into customers. So it's especially with the noise in the industry, like it's still not a saturated industry because there's so many different things. But and especially with obviously what we're bring or what we've brought out, I think is a game changer. However, like how do we get people? How do we influence people to buy? I think that uh, there's uh, you have to know people's pains, and I think that if you are able to uh, pull someone away from pain, uh, is a lot easier than to push someone towards pleasure. So if you're able to say like you're able to now feed your family who's you know say they're in nigeria where they can't find clean starving water or like water or whatever like there, there's a big pain point there where versus someone who's like hey this could be like this you can go and swim in the ocean like someone who want, needs to drink water to live <laughs> is going to be a much more struggle to solve their the solution for their problem than someone who is just going to go create just a pleasure point because it's much easier to um, pull someone out of pain than push someone or push someone towards pleasure. And you have to think like when, if you're pulling away, solving someone's pain, that is going to be a much more motivational thing than being like, um, oh, now you can go on vacation and you know do all these things because then someone's going to be like, well, then I have to like pack for uh, the trip. I have to get buy these clothes for this. I have to do these, and which causes much more stress in a sense. So I think that if you're able to pursue someone that this is going to change their lives and take them away from whatever's causing them pain to something that is going to improve their lives is, uh, substantially is. Uh, a good way to persuade someone into uh, doing what you need them to do in a good way. Yeah, need to you need to do this, um, and you are right. Like that point of like getting out of pain is let's face it, a lot more people are in pain than they are pushing towards pleasure. Like if you look at the like the general statistics of what people earn, how many businesses are failing per year, like the cost of living crisis, like all of these different things are just compounding pain, a hell of a lot of it. Um, so like when it comes to like pulling people out of pain, your pool's bigger, to, in fairness, the more motivated because, oh yeah, I'm comfortable now, but that holiday would look, look pretty cool. It's just not as much as, shit, I need to get out of this because this is painful, this is horrible, I don't see me kids, I, like I barely got got the rent covered, like all of these different things, like the horrible pains to be in. So your pool's a lot bigger, and it's how you tap into that pain, not as a manipulative way, but in a way that goes, hey, you can actually like. I think we we spoke about a few episodes ago, like Ashley Ashley was in a place where she could have lost a house or like, or she could have lost the apartment she was living in and stuff like that. And it's like tapping in and go, well, well, come over here let's have a look at this let's teach you this and you'll be able to sort yourself out and thankfully she did and that was obviously an amazing story that we've we love to tell because of how proud we are but like like it's going and finding those pain points and going hey well i do have a solution and it's using those content marketing strategies to then tap in to make people if they're in pain well so that they're they're aware of the problem like how do we then take our content to create Here's the problem, here's solutions, the solution type, and then here's our solution. So those three phases, obviously driving your content around that, then massively increases that ability um, to get people to convert into customers. Because when you're pulling on pain points, 
it's you can be <laughs> like I'm trying to use persuasive like without feeling <laughs> I'm feeling naughty. Um, but you can be quite quite persu- persuasive to the right person for the right product. But like if you use those pain points and it's a critical skill as someone who's selling is in uh, to be able to navigate someone and persuade someone that this is the thing that they need to do. Because even though they don't have like even though they know they're in pain, they might not know of that solution. So, and there's a million solutions out there and you just need to identify the person, identify the personality type and know that your solution is the best. Then go and influence them to convert the customer. Don't do, don't do it just to make some cash because you won't last long. Like you have to know that whatever you're trying to persuade them to buy and see through the, like the fog is actually worth it. Yeah. And then that goes back to our previous podcast. If you, if you missed that, definitely subscribe to the podcast. You don't miss um, the juicy, juicy details that we always have on this podcast. But we talked about confidence in the product. I think that uh, having that confidence in the product, you don't need to pursue so persuade someone uh, deceitfully. You can do it because you actually believe in the product. And I think that is a, and that goes back to our previous podcast before that, which was being transparent and being honest and open with um, you know, who you are as a person. And so both of those podcasts are very good podcasts to listen to uh, because you just with persuasion, uh, you don't, you, if you believe in the product so much, it doesn't require much persuasion because the energy that you're uh, showing your target audience, your prospect or whatever it is that you're excited about it. And it just, it go, if you're excited about it, that energy kind of just goes hand in hand. And so being able to uh, be persuasive doesn't require you to be deceitful in doing so. Um, and I think that, like I said, just goes back to being confidence in the product, confidence in yourself and being transparent. Yeah. And they say like all those th- different things, like massively they, they come into play, don't they? And it's like, again, we're linking it back to confidence, which was like the last episode, but like talking about like that confidence that the solution is right. You will naturally be able to persuade people a hell of a lot more because yeah. the, there's no energy conflict. There's no like subconscious conflict. There's you'll just be able to con- like convince them that this is right because everything will just flow naturally. But as you say, like seeing people are going to naturally come up if, if they're in pain and you present them an opportunity and they have to invest in that opportunity. They're going to come up with a hundred excuses, like until like your marketing like really takes over and like, you've handled the conversation while in DMs or on the phone. Like they're going to come up with a million excuses. You need to know that. It's it's an obstacle, not a no. So we need to figure out how to divert past these obstacles and understand why the obstacle is there and how you actually help them get out of that. Um, so, for instance, Brandon was talking about, like, on, on a previous podcast that someone said the cash flow challenge was expensive, which it definitely isn't. Um, it's 97% cheaper than most high-ticket courses. So I think that's huge. But that's because I've literally just com- done the comparison Whereas, like, this guy was like, it's expensive. And Brandon was like, yeah, fine, whatever, um, <laughs> in a nice way. But it was like, it's that it's expensive, but it's compared to what? Like, why is it, why are you deeming this expensive when, like, you probably pay for Netflix, Disney Plus, this, Amazon Prime, ding, 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 and to live a life of brokenness? Well, yeah, right. it's expensive um, because you don't want to. You, it's expensive because you don't want to grow. Like you're quite happy, I, even though you say you're not. You're quite happy in this little pain point because you get to moan about it. And obviously, that's not being horrible, but it's like people like if you've got an excuse, life's easier. If people have got an excuse for not doing something, life's easier because you can just palm off the excuse and just carry on with whatever you're doing. Whereas when someone comes and presents you an opportunity, like, hey, this is definitely where you need to be to get out of the pain that you've actually just told me about. And then, like, if you get rid of the excuse, that's really what you do. And that's where the obstacles and the restraints come in. It's like, well, if I do this and then I've got no excuse, I have to be successful. I have to grow. I have to put these put these things in. And sometimes that, like, knowing that success is a debt paid up front is like, 
that can be quite oh right here we go and so it's actually it's not expensive it's it's money's never uh <laughs> money's never an objection there's something always behind it so it's understanding what's behind it and then by, by understanding like the objection is it maybe a mask for something else then you can ha- go and dig even find what is actually the objection so you can move forward like for instance I know obviously I'm rambling, but like now I'm coaching kids every Saturday, like football. And I'm coaching them football um each each Saturday. And sometimes like kids will come to me the nervous, like it's the first time um to obviously play football or like they don't know me, and it's like they come up with like loads of excuses not to play. And it's just like and I already know 90% of their excuses, like they're just nervous, like are you nervous, are you shy, like should we go do this bit first and then we can go and play like the rest of the game? And once they go, are you nervous? And they go, yeah. It's like, it's understanding that concept because I've been a coach for so long. It's like what your objection actually is. And as you go through your sales techniques and your sales calls and conversations, if you just accept the objection at face value, you'll never be able to persuade anyone because you have to dig deep and dig deeper or not to, or to find the right objection to then be able to persuade them. Otherwise, you persuade them on something that is not even true. And therefore, you're never going to get the sale. You really nailed it right there with uh, what you said. Because I think that if you were, I mean, we've, we're repeating the same things of just knowing people's pain points, uh, being confident and being able to actually deliver on the product that you're trying to deliver on and that you have confidence in yourself that you know that this is um, going to be you're the person to help them and doing all three of those things uh, will help you massively. I also recommend the a few books. Uh, one book is uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, which is a, uh, a great book and then Never Split the Difference is another great book uh, about negotiations and uh, from a uh, FBI hostage negotiator. So uh, very good books on, also if, I I just like book on uh, how to negotiate real estate. It it can be used on any type of industry. It's just a a really good uh, book on negotiations. I think all three of those books if you want to learn sales, I think are really good books to uh, to definitely read up on. Absolutely perfect. Okay, guys. So if you've got any comments, you've got any questions about sales, about like how to handle objections, drop them in the comments and we'll gladly come back and answer them. Um, if you are wanting to increase your sales and increase your affiliate marketing business, come and join the five-day affiliate kickstart challenge. There's one starting very, very soon. So go ahead and click the link in the description or the show notes and we will see you on the next episode. Peace.